Glenda O. Young. I'm the Executive Director of the Human Systems Dynamics Institute and founder of the Institute. I am a teacher. I am a researcher. My background is in history and philosophy of science. I lead a network of people, the Human Systems Dynamics Network, of people who are doing work in a variety of fields. And I'm a curious person. It's the intersection of chaos and complexity mm -hmm. with social science. Now what that means is that we're looking at human systems that cannot be predicted or controlled. So if you think about the literature and organization development, management literature, it says you should know what's going to happen, you should do your research, you should make a plan, you should stick with that plan until it gets to the place you're going. And if you don't do that, you're not very good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Or somebody should be blamed. Mm -hmm. That that's the kind of underlying assumption that is in organizations around what leadership and management should be. That a leader should know ahead of time what's going to happen and should be able to control it. But we know from real life that that's not true. That human systems are complex enough that you can't know ahead of time, always. And they're pretty ordinary, so you can't control them either. So what we did was to go into these nonlinear sciences, which also deal with unpredictable behavior, and see what we can learn there that we could bring into human systems. There's a thing that mathematicians call the Baker Transform, and it is like when you bake bread. You knead it and you pull it out and then you fold it back, and you stretch it out and you fold it back. And what's happening, and it's a mathematical transformation, they call it the Baker Transform because it's stretching and folding. Now, what does that have to do with human systems? Well, when you're doing that with the bread, it's building resilient structures inside. So when the bread starts to rise, it has the scaffolding that you've built with the stretching and folding. Well, the same thing is true with the family. It stretches. People go out to do their things in the day, right? And they come back and have dinner together at night. Mm -hmm. Or they go out and play their sports games and they come back and talk about what it is. Or they go off to college and they come home in the holidays. Or they, and so their family is constantly stretching and folding. And when they stretch, it brings in new information, new life, new energy. And when they fold, they remember who they are as a family and they strengthen mm -hmm. their relationships. If they folded all the time, that would be sick. Mm -hmm. And if they stretched all the time, they wouldn't be a family. Mm -hmm. But it's this natural process of stretching and folding. So when I work with a group or work with an organization, that's one of the questions I ask myself. Are they in the process of stretching or folding? Mm -hmm. And is that fitting what they need to do in the world? And how can I help set the conditions for them to stretch if what they're needing is to get more information, more knowledge, more diversity? Or what can I do to help them fold if what they need is stronger connections and similarity? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the lessons that we've learned from nonlinear dynamics that we bring into helping set the conditions mm -hmm. for people to succeed and thrive in very complex environments. The way of knowing that comes up in human systems dynamics because the systems are open, there are lots of variables and there's nonlinear causality, so you cannot know them in any kind of traditional way. Reliability, validity, not possible at all. Mm -hmm. So the traditional ways of knowing simply don't work in these complex adaptive systems. And so one of the things in our journey of research has been to try to find out, well, so what does it mean to know if it's not that? And that's where we have come to this conclusion that it's about patterns. That the way that you come to know something is by knowing its patterns. How is it the same? How is it different? 
How are the relationships within it? And then an articulation of that is the way that you know. And that those patterns you can talk about in terms of your intrapersonal self. You can talk about it in a relationship. There's a pattern, similarities, differences in relationships between two people or in an organization or in a community. So it's the same language, the same way of knowing at all those multiple levels if you can come to know in terms of patterns. That, that a pattern at one level gets replicated at the next level mm. and replicated at the next. And then patterns at the higher ones constrain the patterns below. So that these, all of these levels are connected to each other in causal ways that again aren't predictable, mm -hmm. but you see the patterns move up and down. I think standing in inquiry, asking questions about patterns, so stopping and being mindful at any moment and asking questions about what's the pattern that I see? Is this a healthy pattern? Are there ways that it might be healthier? What might I do to make it more healthy? So it's standing in, in inquiry, which is ironic because you would say ways of knowing should be, well, you know, <laughs> or ways of helping, well, you should help. But since every situation is unique, you, you can't know what to do. Nothing that you do is going to be right in all places and times, except asking the question. And so I would ask people to be curious and inquiring about the patterns that surround them and how they could be more coherent, more energetic, and more adaptive, those patterns. Mm -hmm.